this is going to be a little bit of a story about my experience with the stone moldavite because I do hear a lot of, uh, you know, individuals asking about moldavite. I've seen it in a lot of groups before where people want to know kind of what the stone is for. So I'll just tell you my story and my experiences with the stone. Uh, when I got this stone, I got it from a friend of mine as a gift. And if you didn't know what Moldavite looks like, it's a, you know, it's green and usually has a very darker tone to it. It's a very feminine stone. So the energy is very feminine, but it's very dominant. So it's a dominant feminine stone. If you're someone who has the gift of um, telepathy, you will be able to hear the stone <laughs> speak to you because this stone, in fact, does have its own personality, its own consciousness, and its own energy. A lot of these crystals do. If you uh, were someone who works with crystals, you, you definitely would understand this. So when I got this stone from my friend, um, she sent it to me and she was telling me that this stone was a little sassy, so she gave me a fair warrant. Myself being, you know, the skeptic that I am, I still felt that, you know, that's not true. Even though I'd had many of experiences before with a ton of other crystals, I didn't believe that this one would have like some kind of thought forms and that I'd be able to talk to it. But and it did, in fact, have, you know, the personality that she explained to me, it did. It, it did have that. It also was a very, very persuasive kind of energy. It's like the, um, you know, kind of like when there is a person who's trying to, you know, use peer pressure on you. Here, 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 take a drink. Come in. It's okay. That's the kind of stone that, you know, Moldavite is. It's also the stone of journeying. So if you're taking long journeys and you have you know, a lot of materials with you. It's that stone of shedding during your travel. It also, you know, provides that severing of ties between specific individuals within your life that seem to be toxic. Because I certainly started losing friends when I got this stone as well. And it was out of nowhere. You know, it just so happened that, you know, three freaking people that I knew that I was, that it seemed that I was close to, they just all of a sudden fell off the face of the earth or blocked me on social media for some apparent reason. And, you know, those of you who know me would know that there's definitely, there's definitely like, there's no reason to block me because I'm not someone who's going to harass you. I don't really care to, to be all in your business. I don't care. I, I do my thing. So when I lost those people, I said, so be it. Cause it wasn't really a big deal. Then, you know, I ended up traveling when I had this stone as well. I lost a lot of material possession too, but these were possessions that I had that I was attached to that had no real benefit within my life. So when I lost those things, I kind of, you know, I, I was upset. I was upset because, you know, they were, those things were kind of expensive, but I feel like the stone was just showing me that there's no reason for me to have attachment to that stuff and that it was bullshit. I also would deal with the personality of, of this stone because it did have a personality of its own. Like I said, very dominant, so it didn't want to be around specific kind of stones. It did not want to be around rose quartz. It didn't want to have love energy. It didn't want to be around stones that were for grounding. It wanted to be around the stones that were very charging. So well, the only stone she wanted me to put her on was selenite. But she also... <laughs> demanded that I would put tissue paper over the selenite so she could sit there. I literally would sit the selenite and that stone across the room away from me because she was way too intense. Seriously, that, that's my experience with Moldavite. So loss of material possession, shedding, you know, that addiction to those kind of things to not much, not so much worry about the materials that you have. Realizing that when you have yourself and you have your journey, when you're traveling, there will be more to come because there were many of other things that came my way that replaced those things because of the fact that I was not attached to them. So I let them go. Uh, in a sense, it was definitely letting me realize minimalism. 
I then, you know, definitely became someone who started utilizing that minimalistic uh, lifestyle in a way. Because there's not a lot of things that I feel that I need because I don't really care for them anyway. Clothing, you know, shoes, it, it doesn't, it's not things that really matter to me. What matters to me is wisdom. <laughs> I like wisdom. I like knowledge. I like, I like to explore the, the, the deeper archives of the mind, the inner depths of life. I like to sit and look at the ants walk around and wonder why they do the things that they do. I love the little things. And this is what Moldavite brought me to realize. That the little things are the, the things that are most important. And the little things are things that you don't buy. You don't buy them. They are everywhere. The little things just are. Have a good one, guys.